The Pennine Way is a 429 km long distance footpath from Edale in Derbyshire along the backbone of England through three national parks, crossing the border with Scotland and finishing in Kirk Yetom. Here I am at the Old Nags Head, start of the Pennine Way. Uh, it's Saturday, 9.30 in the morning. Let's go. It's a perfect day for it, a bit overcast, but about 20 degrees. Uh, hopefully no rain forecast for today, I don't think. So it should be nice. I'll take it steady to start off with, at least first day, and then uh, see how far I get today, and try and calculate how long it's gonna take me from there. After weeks of planning, I set off from Edale with all my kit and seven days worth of food. I was attempting to fast pack the entire length of the Pennine Way unsupported. My philosophy was only to use what I was carrying on my back and to drink water from natural sources. As I set off from Edale, my pack weighed in at 13 kilos. Been going 45 minutes now. Uh, that's Jacob's Ladder, the base of Jacob's Ladder just down there. Uh, my map shows we do a slight detour, so it's actually longer, just up this path here. And I'll uh, join up with Jacob's Ladder, but uh, on the 200 meters further up, everyone else is going to go straight up there. But this is uh, the route that's shown on my map, and uh, as much as I can. I'm going to follow exactly the route shown on here. I was following the route marked on the Harvey 1 to 40,000 National Trail Pennine Way map. Back on to Jacob's Ladder and heading straight up here. On to Kinder Scout. Kinder low, 633 meters. It had been very dry in the last few weeks and there was only a trickle flowing over Kinder downfall. This was to be a sign of things to come and also my downfall. There are incredibly long sections of the trail laid with flagstones many reclaimed from the derelict mills in the West Pennines. These flagstones make for dry conditions underfoot, but most importantly, have reduced moorland erosion and have allowed many areas that were devastated with overuse to recover. Crossing the A57! A 
I was almost 20 kilometers in and although I had seen a lot of people on Kinder Scout and the more easily accessible areas, it was certainly thinning out as I passed what I thought could only have been a few people doing the complete Pennine Way. Navigation on the Pennine Way is fairly straightforward and the trail is well marked, although it's always good to carry a map and know how to use it to ensure you stick to your intended route amongst the maze of footpaths. Dropping down to Tor Side Reservoir. And when I get down there, oh, slippery here. Oh. And when I get down there, I'll be on about 26 kilometers, but I've got another four or five kilometers to go. Oh, wet feet. Uh, downhill a bit, so I'm just trotting. Not going too fast. Trying to save some energy for the next few days. Uh, the path is good in places big flagstones and in other places it's just a bit rocky uh, but it's beautiful weather overcast there's a breeze probably about 20 degrees maybe a bit less haven't had any rain yet past quite a few people there's a lot of people out here start of the UK summer holidays but absolutely fantastic scenery is great so far I'm enjoying it I probably haven't gone far enough yet for the pain to, to get, <laughs> make me think otherwise. But really good. Down we go. And when I get down to the bottom, I think I'm gonna have a bit of a break. I've been going for three hours 47 and now it'll be over four hours when I get down to the bottom without stopping. So I'll stop down there, get some food and liquid inside me. Although there are streams on some sections of the route with good drinking water, other sections were a lot drier. Stream beds drying up, leaving very dirty or stagnant water due to the reduced flow. <sighs> Oh yeah. Sun's come out, getting warm now. Just crossing the dam on Tor Side Reservoir. Heading uh, over the uh, dam and then along the side of the reservoir to the right. So we we'll be going about five, just over five hours now. Uh, ascended from Torside Reservoir and now done about 28 kilometers uh, in five hours. So we'll see, uh, see how much we get done today. Anyway, stop to uh, uh, refill my water bottles here at this little stream. Have a 10 minute break. This is the first time I've sat down to have a break so far in the last five hours. So well deserved break. Bite to eat, something to drink, and 
carry on ascending up. Black Hill, 582 meters. Almost been going nine hours, done just over 40 kilometers, and uh, still have more flagstones as you can probably see behind me. And just more moorland, just big open, open moorland, just goes on forever. I think it's probably also the most easterly point in the middle of nowhere. White Hill, 466 meters. Uh, and around here there's absolutely nothing. I'm, I'm looking for a good water source and somewhere flat to camp. Uh, I've been going, well it's eight o'clock in the evening now. So I've been going uh, 10 and a half hours, or 11 and a half hours maybe, something like that. And uh, next water source and camping spot I'm stopping. But anyway, it's a beautiful evening. I haven't seen anyone for <laughs> a few hours. There's no one up here. Well, why would there be anyone up here? It's just, just a stunning evening. Absolutely stunning. So, I hope to find somewhere to camp just before it gets dark. I crossed the M62 motorway and onto Blackstone Edge as I continued looking for water and somewhere flat to camp. It seemed impossible. All the water was either dirty or stagnant. I had no choice. I continued until it got dark and then on into the night. I was now very tired and dehydrated and would end up completing 62 kilometers on my first day over 13 and a half hours. Good morning, 5.30 a.m. Um, absolutely beautiful morning. Fairly clear, pretty cool. Had a, had a okay-ish night's sleep, quite windy. I didn't actually get here till 11 o'clock last night because I kept walking until I could find the water source, which I eventually found. Um, and then just crawled into bed and went to sleep. So um, I'll take my time this morning. Uh, take it a lot easier than yesterday, I think. Uh, take about half an hour now just to 
get up slowly and get underway. Today was to be a lot more countryside, with footpaths through fields and passing small villages. Yesterday I took it far too fast. Uh, really, really tired myself out. I'm still tired from yesterday, obviously. It's only my second day, so I'm gonna be tired anyway. Uh, but today I've been going about three and a half hours and I'm gonna take it a bit steadier. I'm gonna have some more breaks, enjoy it a bit more and enjoy the views a bit more. Top Withens is a ruined farmhouse which is said to have been the inspiration for the location of the Earnshaw family house Wuthering Heights in the 1847 novel of the same name by Emily Bronte. Beautiful day, 12 o'clock, midday. Sun's out, but it's just far too hot. So I'm gonna try and find a water source down by the inlet uh, to this reservoir. And I'm gonna stop there for some lunch and uh, try and rehydrate as much as possible. It was not possible to use my stove on the open moorlands due to the fire risk, so I took the opportunity when I could in a safer location. Rehydrated food was a welcome break from all the sugary energy bars.
Thornton in Craven. 102.5 kilometers from Edale. My uh, plan tonight was to be camping by this river. Uh, I thought it was a river on the map, but it actually turns out it's a canal. Um, and it was going to be my water source, and I don't really want to be drinking canal water. You don't know what's in there. So it's too early anyway. It's uh, five to seven. It's too early to be camping here. Uh, I've got to put up a tent discreetly. I mean, I could probably find somewhere around here, but then no water because I certainly don't want to be drinking that stuff. So I've got to carry on to Gargrave. Um, and maybe I'll find a stream en route and somewhere I can camp, if not, into Gargrave and out the other side. So it's going to be, or it could well be, another long night. Finding water was again to be a problem. I hadn't realised I would be spending so much time in the countryside where water options were lacking. No recent rain to fill the water sources on the higher moorlands limited the options to the lower streams but not too low, or there was a possibility of being contaminated from the surrounding farms and houses. It had now been six hours since I last filled up my bottles. I was again dehydrated. On arriving in Gargrave at 8.30 in the evening, I had already been on the move for 14 hours and clocked up 50 kilometers. With a long walk ahead to continue the search for water and a flat spot to camp, I made the decision to abandon the trip. I caught the last evening train to Leeds where I spent the night before heading home. It had been a great two days, although I'd only completed a quarter of the trail, I was happy with my decision. The conditions weren't right to continue unsupported, and that was my challenge.